you actually are considered a criminal because it's 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 a criminal act to save their seed no bee no pollinator no life yeah no money <laughs> no no honey no money no livelihood no food at the table we need to be able to um, come up with strategies of having enough food. <laughs> Hewa ya Kaplamboi bado ni mbichi kutokana na mvua ya mwisho. Dunia ya Kenya ni nyeusi na nzito. Wakati jogo wa kwanza hajawika na watoto wa shule hawajamka. Lakini wengi matumbo ubaki tupu. Si mwanzo mzuri wa kujifunza. Lakini watoto wa Kenya wako peke yao. Makadirio yanaonyesha kuwa mmoja kati ya watu watatu katika Afrika Mashariki hana utapia mlo. Na kuna zaidi ya watu milioni nane duniani kote wenye njaa. Kutokana na mtazamo wa kimataifa, chakula na usalama lishe ni moja ya changamoto kubwa ya wakati wetu. Sababu maalum ya uhaba mkubwa wa chakula na migogoro ya njaa katika nchi kama Kenya ni nini? Nini kinaweza kufanyika hili kushughulikia swala hili? Dada Josephine ni mwalimu katika shule ya Kikatoliki ya Kaplamboi, eneo la vijijini katika magharibi ya Kenya. Ingawa huu ni mkoa wa kilimo, daima hakuna kitu cha kuvuna. Hii ina maana kuwa sahani nyumbani ni tupu. In the first sign which we get as teachers, we'll find a child comes to school and he or she is very tired. The child lacks concentration in class. And sometimes you can see the child dozing off. And with this, you see the child also very weak that he cannot even play with the others. So when you try to inquire from the child, then you get to know that the child has a problem that she didn't get enough food or she didn't get any food at all. Later is when we get these signs of malnutrition cropping in. Now the Horn of Africa region has been hit by one of its worst droughts in decades, affecting 20 million people, according to the United Nations and aid organizations. To where four out of ten children in Baragoy area suffer malnutrition-related diseases like Kwashako and Marasmus owing to the ongoing drought situation. The area is yet to receive any rainfall despite the return of showers in other parts of the country. Agricultural experts meeting in Nairobi believe countries need to work together to control the fall armyworm infestation. Now, the, post has, the pest has wreaked havoc on farms across eastern, southern, and western Africa, threatening food security. Ukame, mvua, kuongezeka kwa idadi ya watu na wadudu wenye nguvu. Inaonyesha kuwa uzalishaji lazima uwe wa kisasa. Wesley anajivunia kuwa mmoja ya wauzajua kubwa wa bidhaa ya kimataifa na anamotisha ya kusaidia mabadiliko ya sura na kilimo. Because of the growing population, the land is becoming smaller. The land, the land remains the same. Population is increasing. Uh, we, we are looking at maybe in the next, uh, like 2050, the world could be in 11 billion, 12 billion population. So it is, it, it will be double. So what can we do so that, such that at 2050, we will have enough food? So one of the things would be if the land is not increasing, then we should come up with new ways of doing, uh, of producing more. Can we, can we use the same acreage to produce more? Can we use new technologies, maybe greenhouse technology where, where, or, or any other technology? It has happened in some parts of the world. So can we see what has happened in that part of the world and scale it up and use it in other parts of the world? So if we can do that, then I think it is possible. Wesley anafuraha kuwa ukuaji wa kilimo ni kipaumbele kwa serikali ya Kenya. 
serikali inaweka msisitizo kwenye uendelezaji wa mbegu za kisasa mseto. Hizi ni mbegu ambazo zimebadilishwa na kuvuta aina tofauti za mbegu kutoa matokeo bora. Sekta inaahidi kuwa mbegu mpya itakuwa sugu kwa wadudu na kwamba mavuno ya zao la mahindi itakuwa hadi mara nane ya sasa. Hasara kubwa ni kuwa wakulima hawawezi tena kueneza mbegu za binafsi na lazima kununua mpya kila mwaka. Daniel Maingi kutoka shirika la chakula ya Kenya anaishi Nairobi kwa ajili ya mradi wa ziara kwa wakulima. Baada ya msimu kavu sana, msimu wa mvua hatimaye ulianza. Wiki tatu baadaye, lakini makali yalizidi. Cosmos rafiki yake Daniel bado anatumia mbegu za zamani. Daniel anataka kuona jinsi yeye ataendana na mabadiliko ya hali ya hewa ngumu na kama atakuwa na kitu cha kuvuna wakati ya kuku na mvua au kwa na mvua but imeproduce inatoa hata kama ni kidogo eh yeah. uh, cosmos here is has been planting indigenous local corn varieties for quite a while now he says that when he plants his own seed that he says and replants every season he gets a good amount of produce to feed his family no matter what the season is. His neighbors that are planted around here only get long stalks that never put any ears, neither do they put any grain. And so they end up cutting and feeding livestock, but no food. In a Kadiriwa robotatu ya wakulima wote wadogo nchini Kenya utumia mazao ya jadi ambayo wao uzidisha wenyewe. Katika siku za baadaye watapata adhabu. Kwa ajili ya kuendeleza biashara ya mbegu soko katika kilimo, serikali imepitisha sheria kali katika kukabiliana na mbegu. Daniela naamini hii ni hatua hatari sana kwa wakulima na viumbe hai wa nchi ya Kenya. Yeye anatuhumu kwamba si kweli kuhusu usalama wa chakula ya wakenya, lakini ana maslahi tofauti sana ya biashara ya baadaye. And what we are hearing for, from farmers is that the old, old varieties, including old hybrids, when you put them side by side with newer varieties, whether they are from Syngenta, whether they are from Amiran or Bear, they are not any better with 50-year-old varieties that were produced by the Kenya Seed Company. Hata hivyo, tarehe 11 Mei 2016, Kenya ilijiunga na UPOV kufanya mkataba kwa maslahi ya kampuni kubwa za mbegu. Makubaliano ya kulinda kampuni za mbegu na mifugo kutoka na kalaharamu ina lengo la kujenga mfumo mmoja wa kisheria ambayo ingeweka misingi ya uwekezaji binafsi katika bara kwa ajili ya sekta ya kimataifa. Kenya imebadilishwa sheria zake si tu kuzuia bidhaa bandia lakini hata kupiga marufuku uuzaji wa mbegu jumla zisizothibitishwa. Kwa wakulima wengi wadogo habari hii ni mbaya. Tayari mwaka 2014 vyombo vya habari vilionya kwamba marufuku hii itakuwa na athari kwa asilimia sabini ya idadi ya watu wa vijijini ambao wamekuwa wakitumia na kubadilishana mbegu za jadi kwa vizazi. Katika siku za baadaye wao watapata adhabu ya miaka tano jela au fidia ya shilingi milioni kumi, ambaye ni sawia na mapato yao ya miaka themanini. Sheria hii ina hatari ya kuwalazimu wakulima katika mtego wa madeni na hivyo basi kukiuka wajibu na hali ya kuheshimu haki ya chakula. If we allow laws and policies to come in that are giving more space to corporations and to businesses to continue damaging the environment for farming to continue criminalizing farmers for practicing their culture or the culture of farming we are going to end up being food insecure and that will not help anybody but just 
the corporations. Kwa mtazamo wa kwanza, sekta ya nchini Kenya ina mafanikio. Takwimu ya mavuno inashuhudia kuongezeka kwa mavuno ya Kenya. Lakini kwa kweli Daniel yuko sahihi. Kwa sababu mtazamo wa pili unaonyesha kuwa jumla ya eneo ya kilimo ya mahindi imekuwa mara mbili tangu mwaka 1980 pamoja na ongezeko ya matumizi ya mbolea, dawa na mbegu za kisasa mseto katika miaka ya karibuni kumekuwa na hakuna ongezeko la mavuno halisi. Ni maendeleo yanayochanganya usalama wa chakula. Kwa sababu ya ongezeko sawia katika idadi ya watu, resheni kwenye sahani imekuwa ndogo. Hata hivyo, sekta bado inaamini kuwa lengo la kilimo kisasa katika Afrika ni jibu bila kuchunguza kwa endelevu jamii zinazojumuisha njia mbadala. We want to change also the mindset of our farmers that we need to uh, do our agriculture with that uh, um, business mind or uh, profit objective. So I think we are changing that. We want to our farmers to understand that this is a business and it's a profession just like any other. You can you can earn from farming, you can earn from agriculture just like you earn from any other job. <laughs> Gerrit Gades ana wasiwasi. Yeye anafanya kazi katika nchi za Magharibi Kenya kwa niaba ya Wizara Maendeleo ya Ujerumani kwa mpango GIZ ukarabati wa mashamba ya wazi yenye sumu. Kipaumbele ya zao moja la mahindi nchini Kenya ni tatizo kubwa. Hasa kwa sababu mbegu kisasa huleta mavuno tu katika hali fulani ambayo ni ngumu kufikia. Kwa Gerrit udongo imemalizika. Hii ni sababu kubwa kwa nini mazao si ya juu. Ingawa makampuni ya mbegu hudai mavuno duni ni kwa sababu watu hutumia mbegu za ndani. Kwa hiyo, wakulima wadogo katika mafunzo ya GIZ jifunza kujenga mzunguko wa asili kama njia mbadala kwa mbolea bandia na zao moja. Ni ajabu lakini hawawezi kufukuzwa kazi. Miradi ya maendeleo katika Afrika Mashariki ni kukarabati udongo ulioharibiwa na pembejeo za viwanda ili kufanya rutuba tena. So even when harvesting you don't have to use a uh, jembe because the soil is uh, now better as you can see. And it has a lot of humus wow. because you can see the brown dark color that yeah. is a sign of it. Also in einer Handvoll fruchtbaren Bodens haben sie mehr Mikroorganismen als Menschen auf der Erde leben, also mehr als 7 Milliarden Mikroorganismen. Das bedeutet, das ist ein Eingriff in die Natur, wenn nicht Pestizide, die ja nie spezifisch wirken, sondern meistens unspezifisch sind, Breitbandwirkung haben, dass sie dann die Bodenorganismen natürlich auch stark schädigen und das hat dann wiederum einen negativen Effekt. Dhana ya GIZ utegemea kanuni nne za kirafiki ambazo ni kinyume na ufumbuzi wa sekta ya kawaida. Ulimaji wa udongo, kutumia mzunguko mazao ya mimea na viumbe hai. Mbinu hii ya kilimo uhakikisha udongo wa juu unalindwa kutoka kwa jua kali. Udongo inatiliwa virutubisho mpya na mmomonyoko wa udongo kupungua. Es ist so, dass wir nach diesen nach dieser Zeit sagen können, dass wir im Schnitt die Erträge sowohl von Mais als auch von Boden um 30% erhöht haben. Aber natürlich je länger wir arbeiten mit den gleichen Flächen, desto fruchtbarer wird der Boden. Mafanikio ya njia hizi yamethibitishwa na Cosmas Zoduro Tieno. Kama wakulima wengi wadogo, alikuwa akitegemea bidhaa ya sekta ya kemikali katika shamba yake ndogo, lakini sasa Kamwe anataka kupunguza matumizi yake. The land was barren or poor. If 
I was not get this information or these skills, I thought uh, the whole of the family, my family, would know where to go, even me. And could you explain to us how the pesticides, uh, what the pesticides did to your soil? Because the soil was very compacted, very, very poor. When the rains came, it washed even the top soil because of these chemicals. Wadudu lazima washambuliwe katika mashamba yote ya wakulima, sio tu kwa shamba la Cosmas. Katika mpango wa GIZ, alifundishwa mbinu ya kukaza na kukazua kwa ajili ya kuthibiti asili ya wadudu na maendeleo katika Kenya. Yeye sasa anachanganya asili kilimo ya mimea katika maeneo na kutilia dawa ya Desmodium katikati ya safi ya mimea ambaye ni ya asili ya Afrika. Anatenga viungo ambazo upunguza wanyama na wadudu. Wakati huo huo, anadhibiti ukuaji wa madhara ya mizizi na vimelea striga hili kuimarisha udongo na virutubisho zinazotumika kulinda udongo kutokana na mmomonyoko. Kando kando ya shamba yeye upanda ukanda wa tembo nyasi ambayo uvutia wadudu na kutaga mayai yao huko. Hata hivyo, mabua yawezi kuishi katika nyasi. Tembo nyasi pia hutumika kama chakula cha mifugo. Mbolea ya wanyama pia hutumika kama mbolea. Mzunguko wa madini kamili uundwa juu ya ardhi na Cosmas anaweza kulima bila ya ununuzi na gharama kubwa ya hatari za kemikali. So within your farm you are recycling all the nutrients. All the, the nutrients. Cattle is fed with uh, yes. organic, uh, with organic <coughs> and the fodder you and have on your farm. Yes. And you feed them and the manure is also used uh, back to the farm. Back to the farm. Compost and yes. then it's back, back to the field. So yes. You have your so it is a cycling. Yes. Recycling, uh, eh? Yeah. Before getting the knowledge and put the knowledge in practical, the farm was very poor. But after getting the knowledge, the, the farm getting richer and it will be richer. And I'm expected for the coming generation to get their land if it is virgin as the God created. Kilimo ya mashamba ni msingi wa mlo wetu. Kwa kutumia ardhi yetu kwa njia sahihi, hau kutumia sana kunaweza kuwa na madhara mbaya, hivyo kuchukua tuwa ni gali na karibu wa iwezekani. Kila mwaka, zaidi ya ekari milioni sita za ardhi, uwaribiwa kwa kutumika sana, mmomonyoko wa udongo, mienendo ya mabadiliko ya hali ya hewa, ukame ulio kithiri na mvua kubwa. Hii inaeleza umuhimu wa kuwa na sera na mazoea ya kulinda ardhi yetu ya kilimo. Kipengele nyingine muhimu kwa ajili ya kuhakikisha usalama wa chakula nchini ni kuhifadhi mazao. Hadi ya silimia msini ya mboga zinazozalishwa na asilimia mbili ya mazao ya maindi, uharibika na kuchukuliwa kuwa sio muhimu kwa kuvamiwa na wadudu kila mwaka. Tamaa ya kilimo kati ya mwaka 2009 usimamia mavuno na ambayo utekelezwa katika bukura na serikali. Yeye anakadiria ya kwamba zaidi ya asilimia hamsini ya wakulima wadogo katika ukanda huu bado uweka mazao yao katika magunia. Asilimia isiyo zidi tano ya wakulima uwekeza katika magala hata kama ilimaanisha mafanikio zaidi kwa ajili ya kilimo zao na maisha. So if she has 10 bags here, at the end of the storage or at the use, end of the usage, she realizes that she has only used, the best she could use is around four to five bags. The rest is either useless, destroyed. destroyed. And then if she cannot keep it here for a long time, knowing that it will be destroyed. So what she does, she prefers to sell the maize because it, it, if it stays here for a long time, 
it will be destroyed. But after acquiring the silo, <coughs> familia inaweza kuhifadhi mavuno yao kwa usalama katika silo na kuepuka wafanyabiashara wasio kuwa waaminifu na kushuka soko. Hata hivyo, masoko nafuu huwa na gharama nyingi, magala ya ndani ya nchi zinazozalishwa si dhahiri angalau ndani Mbukura. Kushinda vita dhidi ya njaa kuna vipengele muhimu tuwafaa kushiriki kuliko tu kuongeza mavuno. Lakini amu ya kujenga viwanda vya sekta ya kilimo Kenya bila kujali kama hili ni suluhisho bora bado imara. Na tatizo kwamba serikali na wadau wa biashara wa eneo hilo wana upofu hakika kwamba makampuni ya magharibi ujua njia ya haki na kwamba wana uzoefu wa matatizo katika mfumo wa chakula kama Ulaya si mara kwa mara katika Afrika but we cannot ignore the environmental effects also and side effects on us on these products so and which could relate to human health uh, or even marine and animal health which which could affect the environment either through affecting our animals or, or even the the environment itself but we hope that the stakeholders who are manufacturing these products are sensitive to that and therefore are responding or uh, working on strategies of bringing safer products hata hivyo wakati dawa kama vile neonicotinoids zilipigwa marufuku kwa matumizi ya nje na ndani ya Ulaya kuna kuwa shauku bidhaa hii ipo nje ya Afrika Mashariki kwa kuwa hali halisi Matumaini ya Wesley si sahi. Ein guter Tag für den Schutz der Bienen. Mit diesen Worten hat Bundeslandwirtschaftsministerin Klöckner die Entscheidung der EU zum teilweisen Verbot von Neonicotinoiden begrüßt. In recent years, the world's population of bees has been decimated and scientists aren't sure exactly why. But a new study finds that the most widely used kinds of pesticides could be part of the problem. London's Parliament Square was a buzz Friday with people dressed as beekeepers and even bees. Yeah, the bees would have to have pollinate. At one point, the activists swarmed around the British Prime Minister's home, lobbying for a yes vote Monday for the ban on a pesticide called neonicotinoids. Wanasayansi wameshuhudia kupungua kwa asilimia 75 ya wadudu wote wa kuruka. Hii ni tishio kubwa kwa usalama wa chakula. Bila wachafuzi, mimea mpya na mazao hawezi kuota na kukua. Kenya bado ina nyuki porini. Makundi ya kuvutia yanayopatikana hapa na pale. Mkurugenzi wa taasisi ya Wizara ya Kilimo ya Nyuki, Grace Asiko anajua umuhimu wa wadudu au wadogo kwa usalama wa chakula. Taarifa za kuaminika kuhusu idadi ya nyuki ni ngumu. Kwani katika eneo zima mipango ya uchunguzi haijafanyika kwani hatuna vifaa vya kufanya uchunguzi nchini Kenya. When I was growing up I used to be more often stung by the bee than now because I would go around a tree playing not knowing that there's a colony inside when I put my hand in a depression Definitely there were bees almost everywhere. This time round I see as if kids play so much and I don't see them saying they're stung. So which means definitely the space for bees is limited. Umuhimu wa wadudu wadogo haijasiki. Kwa Grace, ni swala la moyo kuwashawishi wa kulima wadogo kuweka mizinga ya nyuki kwenye ardhi yao. Anataka kuondoa hofu ya nyuki kwa kuunda makao mpya kwa ajili ya wadudu. Mwisho lakini si angalau ni kupigania usalama wa chakula katika mikoa. You know you have to make the paths gentle so that the bees don't get irritated. You have to smoke them gently but effectively. These are very sensitive to the environment. As we are also told they are indicators of the environment. If they are there we are happy that the environment is relatively clean. And I can see there's a bit of honey.
you know, when there's biodiversity, there's continuity. And then also when you have fruit crops around you or plants, then you are ensured of the quality production because of pollination. The bees increase food production through quality and quantity. Yeah, when it's quality, quantity, then there's food security. And when you are all food secure, then you are health nation. And the problem I have is now the bee health. Umuimu wa wadudu wadogo haijasiki. Kwa Grace, ni swala la moyo kuwashawishu wa kulima wadogo kuweka mizinga ya nyuki kwenye ardhi yao. Anataka kuondoa hofu ya nyuki kwa kuunda makao mpya kwa ajili ya wadudu. Mwisho lakini si angalau ni kupigania usalama wa chakula katika mikoa. But because uh, from the way we are observing now there is evidence that bees are declining and for whatever purpose we have to investigate. I believe uh, uh, the toxic effect from chemicals could be playing a critical role. People are now more, more well versed with the use of chemicals, but they are not using it sustainably. So it means there could be some chemicals which are being used and possibly they have been banned elsewhere because of their toxic effects. So for that matter, maybe people are doing it out of ignorance or they just defy whatever, the, the, whatever is already known. Inaweza kupuuzwa kuwa Grace yuko sahihi kwa kudhani dawa za wadudu zilizozuiliwa Ulaya zinauzwa katika Afrika Mashariki. Ni aibu kwa kujadiliana jinsi ya kuongeza mavuno ya chakula hila wakati huo huo sekta ya serikali inaweka wasaidizi wa kawaida wachafuzi katika hatari. Kundi la bea kutokea ujermani inatuhumu bidhaa hizi ni sehemu muhimu katika utaratibu wa Afrika. Kampuni inayomiliki dawa ya imidacloprid uuza bidhaa hamsini na sita kwa makampuni mbalimbali nchini Kenya. Tisa kati ya bidhaa hizi utoka bea. Na hii si tu kuhusu dawa yoyote. Kwani hata kijiko moja uleta maafa zaidi ya bilioni kwa nyuki. It has to be a responsibility of, of all of us, the user and also the producer of the, or the manufacturer of the chemical. But I think the larger part or the owners, the responsibility is with the supplier or the manufacturer of the chemical. Because they know what is in this chemical, they know how it should be used, and if people are not using it uh, in the correct way, then it should be their responsibility to try and disseminate the information, get the information to the farmer. Tukitazamia ulaya, maali kutoweka kwa aina fulani tayari na yonekana, inaonyesha kuwa kilimo cha kisasa kina mapunguvu licha ya kilimo viwanda. Mfano wa ulaya sio zuri kuhiga. Ishara ya kwanza ya onyo tayari imetambuliwa nchini Kenya. Mchanga imeharibika kwa kilimo cha zao moja, mbolea bandia na matumizi ya dawa hau dalili ya kwanza idadi ya nyuki kupungua. Hizi ni ishara na onyo za mapema. Na zaweza rejelewa kwani bado mapema. Aidha, inakuwa wazi sana kwamba tuwafaa kuleta seti tofauti kabisa ya vitendo kama tunania ya kupambana na njaa. Pamoja na idadi ya watu duniani ya watu bilioni 7.5 Kiasi cha sasa cha uzalishaji wa mazao zinaweza kulisha watu bilioni 12 kufikia 14. Hata hivyo, zaidi ya milioni 800 hufa kwa njaa. Hii ni dalili ya wazi kuwa ufumbuzi sio tu uongo na kuongezeka kwa mavuno kama ni kuwa ulienezwa na viwanda.